A few weeks back, I made videos about the Radeon Pro WX5100 and WX4100. And in that video, I commented that I was using an overclock on these cards that was accomplished by editing the BIOS. And following the release of those videos, the most common question I got was, how can I also edit the BIOS on these cards? So I just wanted to create a quick video to show how to edit the BIOS and overclock the WX5100 and WX4100, though it would also work for other cards based on the same architecture. The first thing that you'll need is your BIOS. And you can get this using uh, Tech Power Up's GPU Z, and I'll leave a link to that and all the other software in this video in the description below. After loading up GPU Z, you can press the button right next to the BIOS version and click Save to File, and save the file to your desktop or to wherever is easy for you to find. The next piece of software you're going to need is the Polaris BIOS Editor. And once you have that open, you can press Open BIOS in the top left hand corner, find the BIOS that you just recently saved, and open that. Starting with the WX5100, and this is a little bit easier than the 4100, since my card actually already had the timings for higher memory speeds. This means the only thing you need to do to overclock the memory is to change the memory speed in the memory box. And we'll enter in 1750 since that's the highest timings that are available. For the GPU, you can experiment to see what works better for your card, but I'm going with 1200 megahertz, and I'm also doing a slight undervolt, but my recommendation is to leave the voltages alone and do that at the very end. Note that the default values in the voltages are encoded, so I'm not actually running at 66 volts, that's just the number that will translate into something like 0.9 volts. The next numbers we want to look at are the power to numbers, increasing them all the way up to around 70 watts, um, as well as the amps. And this will just give a little more headroom over to the card. The max we can bring out is about 75, so you may want to play around with that number to see what temperatures are you're comfortable with. Um, I wouldn't really recommend going above 70 since there does spike at times a little bit above that, um, and that could potentially lead to damage to your motherboard. So for long term, you may want to look at more like 65, uh, but for, you could do around 70. And finally, you're going to want to adjust the fan curve here uh, so that we can deal with the extra heat. So increasing the max RPM as well as uh, just increasing that when the fan starts kicking in. And once we have all that stuff set, we can click save as, save the BIOS, and then proceed to flashing it to your card. Taking a quick look at the WX4100, and most of this is going to be roughly the same um, as processed as the WX5100. The one thing that's different is that there are no higher memory timings available for uh, the WX4100. So we're just going to adjust the max speed and leave the timing straps alone. This does limit us to a much less impressive 1600 megahertz, so increasing from 1500 to 1600, but potentially you could go faster than that if you did want to play around with the timings. Then it starts following the same process. We enter the higher memory speed in the memory section, we increase the GPU speed in the GPU section, and increase the power limits in the power tune section, as well as increasing the fan speed in the fan section. Unlike the WX5100, the WX4100 doesn't ever achieve the 70 watts that we're putting in here, so that doesn't really matter quite so much. And most of that's to do with this card being a much smaller chip. Then click Save As, Save the BIOS, and then we can proceed to flashing the BIOS to the card. Now, as with all overclocking, your mileage will vary when you are trying to find your ideal settings for your card. So you can base them off of mine, but potentially you might need to lower them and potentially you could increase them. Uh, but if the flashing does fail, it more than likely means you need to lower down the settings. The next step is to open up AMD VB Flash Win and then click the load image button, find the updated BIOS that you just saved, and then click program. This process shouldn't take more than 10 seconds. So if it does, Give it a minute or two, and then more than likely you'll have to pull the plug on your computer if it has become unresponsive. Usually this will happen if you are a little too aggressive with your overclock or a little bit too aggressive with your undervolt. Once you see the success message, you'll then get a notification saying that you need to reboot your system in order for the changes to take effect. Make sure you click no uh, in this case because there's one final step so that you can uh, use the card as normal. You'll want to open up ATI KMDAG Patcher and then proceed to patch the drivers that you have installed on your computer. If like me, it says already patched, that means you're already good, but if you aren't patched, uh, make sure that you do enable all patches. 
And once that's complete, you can then restart your computer and use it like normal. I ran 3D Mark Time Spy to get a before and after comparison to see what kind of uplifts in performance we can get by overclocking these cards. Depending on your overclock as well as which games you're playing, this may not ring true for you, but for the most part, the Time Spy numbers have been pretty representative of the uplifts I've seen. Starting off with the WX4100, and we can see a 30% uplift in Time Spy, which is pretty impressive considering we only overclocked by, you know, 9% or so, uh, and so most of these gains are actually coming from the unlocked power limits. Moving over into the WX5100, and we did overclock this one a much more aggressively, and it shows as we are getting now almost 60% uplift in performance. Again, a lot of this comes from the increase in power limits, though in this case, the slower memory speeds on the WX5100 by default were really hurting performance. And just putting another angle to this, if we look at the stock WX5100 versus the overclocked WX4100, and now we're in a much more similar band of performance, you know, plus or minus 10%, which is great if you are confined to using the WX4100 that you can get pretty much WX5100 performance. I do recommend that you take the time to fine tune to see what works best for your card and make sure that it is 100% stable, but this guide should get you at least most of the way there.